Well, the focaccia is a lovely dough because of the amount of water it has in it. It doesn't have as much water as ciabatta. It has more water than a baguette dough, but that means it's right in the middle. It's very easy to work with. It's very easy to transform into a breakfast, lunch, or dinner bread. It's fun to make with friends or family, so it can truly become the focus of your dinner, and that's where the word focaccia comes from, focus. Our flour is 16 ounces. I like King Arthur flour just because it's been very consistent. Salt brings out the flavor, but it also is the marker for fermentation. It helps slow fermentation. All right, so I'm using active dry yeast. It's a teaspoon and a half. And then the temperature of the water is very important, so it needs to be between 105 and 115. Until you're used to knowing what the temperature of the water should feel like, you can always use an instant read thermometer, but I'm pretty well versed at this, mm -hmm. so. And I always finish it off with a few finger twirls just to make sure that those globs of yeast and water have dissolved. The end dough temperature should be around 75 degrees. That's the healthiest environment for your yeast to live. So it balances with a hot temperature in the yeast. Mm -hmm. So this is where the fun begins. And I'm going to make a little well in the center. And I like to add the yeast mixture first. And once that's incorporated, then I start slowly adding the water. And I like to mix from the center my hands straight up, almost like a spatula, and let the flour come to me. Otherwise, sometimes, if you don't mix this way, you get big clumps of dough that are really hard to unknot at the end. How I finish it then is by taking my plastic dough scraper and scraping from the side. You can see these beautiful dough strands starting to form. The next step is the easiest step of all. We just let it rest for about 15 minutes, mm -hmm. and that's called autolise. I'm going to put a little bit of flour down, and then we're going to turn the dough out of the bowl. And it looks very rough and shaggy. But our goal is to turn it to line up the gluten strands so it becomes a stronger, more malleable dough. And what I do is pull it into a re rectangle with the short side facing me. And then flip it down like that. And you can see that it's beginning to smooth out. And you can also take your dough scraper, flip up the bottom, turn the side in, turn this side in, and then flip it over. And your dough has begun to take shape. The next step is putting your dough in an oil bowl, just about a teaspoon. And I'm going to take the top and put it down and then turn it over. And one of the tricks that I like to do is to put a little oil on the side of the plastic that's going to be touching the dough if the dough rises. And then I'm going to get my magic marker and write the time, which is probably about 3.30. And that'll just help us track the fermentation. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put a little bit of oil on our pan. Mm -hmm. And in the book, I often say, let the dough assume its natural shape, which is kind of helpful. Um, it means you're not going to really push or stretch or tear your gluten strands. You get this beautiful interior structure by folding, not kneading, and being very gentle and, and kind. <laughs> People always say they like to relieve their stress by making dough, but that's the worst thing for dough <laughs> or for bread, <laughs> because it just turns out to be a very stiff, tight interior crumb. So this needs to relax for maybe 10 or 15 more minutes, and then we'll continue shaping it. I'm going to add a little bit of our rosemary infused oil to the top. It has such a beautiful feeling right now. And I like to tell my students, to do this, it's almost like you're playing the piano. 
You don't have to do it so aggressively hard. You want to do it very gently. And then I'm going to start adding the fruit, which is grapefruit, orange, and blood orange. And I try to be a little bit artistic about this and balancing the colors that it looks very Matisse-like. <laughs> and the fruit has been sitting in the rosemary infused oil, so it just gives it that extra intense flavor. And as I put these in, I try to push them down to make sure that they're embedded in the dough. Otherwise, they'll pop out. Okay, and then the final step is going to be adding the turbinado sugar. So it looks nicely browned. And then it's really important to take the bread out of the pan and put it on a cooling rack to let the air circulate so that it cools completely. And then once it does, it's when I add a little bit more rosemary. I made a sugared citrus morning bread, which is based on my focaccia dough in my book. And I've topped it with grapefruit, oranges, blood oranges, rosemary oil, and turbinado sugar. And it's a unique combination of flavors that are especially welcoming for breakfast. It's both uh, refreshing, but has a bit of sugar to it, and it satisfies, I think, everything that you'll want for breakfast.